from independent samples. Uh, so actually, it's not changed by all the events. We only change by <coughs> actually half. And we compare one and uh, compare the other one to check this guy always in the event associated with the kind of BDT, several nitty gritty things. Yeah. And how do you, how do you treat systematics in BDTs? Mm -hmm. How do you treat the systematics of all these distributions in the BDT? Oh, basically, we compare the, uh, the sample. Well, the basic idea is compare the, uh, the, the control sample and the, uh, the, uh, the signal, right? So we have a lot of P control sample from like the B plus and the B sub S to Z sub Phi. But usually this kind of, it's triable compared for the thing enough. For big one, we don't care. Mm -hmm. right? So here, big one, we just feed from data. So we don't, we don't worry about it. So the only issue is from the single efficiency. And then they then it migrate from one thing to the other. So we use the uh, B control sample like Z sub Phi to mm -hmm. check. Yeah. So this is probably the, the only way we can do so far. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but we can cut title on this side by. So you select high more. Yes, we we try to select the events with a better, I mean, better kinetical matched events. Well, it's also need for trigger study because they are triggered by different events, right? Normalization and the signal are triggered by different triggers, so we need to match them in terms of kinetics as well. But how do you know the absolute efficiency? Well, we can't, we can't, so we can only do ratios to the normalization channel. Anyways, take by normalization, right? If uh, the difference is only to the normalization, is okay. But if, uh, if the absolute one, we don't know. Right, 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 exactly. All right, so this is just like a project into another dimension. That's a, that was the dimension for BDT, so this is the dimension for the, the B sub S mass, well, or, or dimensional mass, actually. So, so we see some kind of peak. So in principle, you can say, okay, we some hints here, some signal. Well, some hitting or somewhere, but it's very difficult to see, I would say. So, so what we do here is just project every things together. I mean, put the, put them together and weight by this, what we call a signal to S plus B weights. So it becomes uh, something like this. So you see a big bump, which is uh, here is a BS to mu mu bump, and another bump nearby is a BD to mu mu bump. So we can say the signal is pretty clear at this moment. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> the significance for BS to mu mu is already like a 4.3 sigma. It's not yet observed in terms of our so-called uh, uh, standard value, but the, uh, we do expect to about to observe that, that we almost expect in 5 sigma. So that four, we expect in 4.8, we see 4.3. And this is our measurement. And for BD to mu mu, actually, we do not have any significance. Like it's only like a two, 2 sigma. So basically we give uh, an upper element. So this is the same as result already published in PIL for in 2003. 2000, uh, 2013, sorry. So this is the same as part. And I'll quickly go through HCP part as well. Uh, no, this is the before that, this is just one can one event display <coughs> on CMS. Uh, you see uh, this is a one of three clean events, these two new ones. This is uh, look at the way, mu on one, mu on two, three clean. But I really said this look like, look like the uh, moves somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't you think so? Right. <laughs> anyway, so let me talk about LGCP uh, analysis as well. So as I see, I try to put as many videos as possible. And then see if my left are still hand is still wrong. <laughs> and this is the LGCP. So the concept is somewhat different from CMS. CMS is like a general detector, as I say, it's a Swiss army line. So we can do many things, just like a single you are MacGyver to do whatever you want to do. So we can destroy uh, 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 whatever factory with a Swiss knife, with some carbon tab, whatever you can do. But uh, the HCP is more dedicated. It's only uh, control the event in the forward region. It's a forward spectrometer. And only optimized for a heavy frame of physics. So let's have a better uh, resolution uh, at the uh, relative lower energy, because this, uh, we are looking for like a separate GeV particle, not like a TeV particle. CMS is good for TeV stuff, but not very optimum for this kind of several GeV thing. So like uh, this, uh, this uh, optimization point is somewhat different. So they have actually better resolution than, than CMS. And the, uh, the uh, trigger is actually also very efficient. Basically, they can actually lower down the ratio as much as possible. So this is how, how it's doing. This is just an overlapping between two detectors. So HCB is like, just like a disk triangle region. 
and CMS actually covers uh, another region. So actually, we are measuring different different regions <coughs> and stuff, so different angles. So the, I, basically, the collision was happening here. So uh, so they have uh, several important detectors will be used in the analysis, like uh, this which I will talk about it slightly later, and then this is power meter and the neuron system. So um, HCB have uh, actually has a dedicated particle ID, basically. Uh, as I already mentioned, the muons and the hadron separation are very important in this measurement. So uh, they have this sensing sensing looks, uh, looks need a lot of money, so it's very rich. It's a, it's a uh, ring energy training of detector. Uh, they can actually have a dedicated ID can separate the different particles, like the proton, kion, pion, and the muon. Okay. So they actually form a so-called uh, global particle ID, likely to based on all the information they can have. Again, similar things uh, we, we use. We are using BDT here, they are using uh, Different method, but the idea is similar. In the end, they will see the uh, they have a 0.5 uh, percent or like a five four to six per meal. So you see, actually, the effect rate is higher for HCB somehow. So uh, this is probably due to the uh, they have some some vacancy between the checker and the new one, and which is uh, hard to hard to reject the uh, particle decay in the fly. Hmm? Yeah. Exactly. So I see this is uh, some irony. Okay, anyway. Uh, and this is just a quick snapshot of the normalization as well. So basically, they are using uh, instead of same channel, B, B plus to this side K plus, and they have also checked the B, B to K pi as uh, another normalization. So you see this uh, 1 million of this side K plus, this uh, 38,000. 38, the B to K pi. I still remember this. This was uh, one of the first channel where we used uh, NSA and fail, and that's only like a few counts. Now it's like a, thousands of counts. It's a very big channel nowadays. Right? It's become normalization. It's not real anymore. So, <coughs> yeah. And another, I just want to mention another important factor is the uh, the fraction of uh, hadronization fraction between a uh, uh, straight quark and a new quark. Which is measured by HCB itself, is like a, a, around like a six percent precision. So they basically are measured from a B B S decay to D sub S and to B B to D transition. Actually, what's the high tech term? Uh, which one? The B to K pi. B to K pi. Is that one? The, that's it. This is the high tech term. Uh, you mean high side tail? Yeah. Is it another? It, I think it's a different. It's a, probably K, K, K or something. That's a K K. Right? K I think it's a K pi. So K, K, K or pi pi. How about pi pi? Pi pi is bigger, so it's pi pi. Oh. Okay. Pi pi. Well, yeah. Probably. Uh, either K K or K pi pi. And the uh, anyway, uh, and the even the analysis is similar, so uh, I do not go to detail again. So basically, uh, LGSP also include a lot of different uh, variables like the lifetime, evaluation, all these things, and everything is injected into BDT. And so CMS and LGSP are somehow using almost the same strategy to do the analysis. So uh, doing uh, put the event into BDT and the chart. So this is their set eight categories. Instead of twelve, they have eight. So this is from the uh, lowest purity beam to the highest purity beam. So well, again, we see some kind of hint of a signal <coughs> in general. So we can point out now uh, this as the red curve are the signal. So uh, so we see the upper here is a higher purity. So in general, uh, we still need to like uh, open, uh, put them back together to get uh, a more feasible pump. So this is a. Uh, uh, a sum up of best three categories into a, into a single plot. So you see a BS peak and the BD peak. So they see like BS to minimum decay is like a 4.0 sigma, so they expect it 5.0. So this means the one they are measuring slightly smaller than they expected, like 2.9, but it's okay. That's four sigma. Yeah, it's four sigma. I don't believe. You don't believe, right? So <laughs> I see this is exactly a lot of people ask the question why. It's the first time I see this, so good. Okay, so you're unbiased. I'm unbiased. Yeah, yeah I see. <laughs> we're keeping asking this question from uh, when, when we saw this at the EPS conference uh, in 2013. So you see, this is uh, all the data that's out of the curve. How can you do that? Also, the, yeah. the beginning of this histogram looks suspicious. Pick, yeah, yeah. So actually, we, we the peak goes through the black. So it's not a very good plot, I must say. <laughs> so it's it's exactly the, our challenge to them, but they, they always give us some some okay answer. But the, how can we do? 
even I now have less data set, I can actually repeat this space by myself. But, uh, but it's not based on this plot. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Literally, the result is coming from eight, uh, eight categories together. Right. These three so is just these so three. That's three why things. I don't like the BGC. <laughs> 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 it so only predicts the, 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 the uh, maybe. The, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the squeeze, the CBD. Yeah. Yes, it's artificial, maybe. Yeah, yeah. anyway, so they are like a four, four, four sigma. And this is the result. So also, uh, PT to mu mu is also like uh, two sigma. So uh, also give a limit. So basically, this is also publish a PI or back to back to, to the same as results so together. So anyhow, this is the upper limit plot. So all right. So I show have a uh, just want to sh again show you uh, event display. Uh, this is a dimuon from the uh, PK candidate. So it's, I, I cannot think of something maybe like a Christmas tree, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> A little bit like a Christmas tree for today, but uh, I cannot say too much. Right? All right, so this is uh, 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 this is the LGCP result. Same as result, I will show the LGCP result. So I'm going to show you the, the server combination. So we have to combine it some way, right? So again, okay, some movie a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you remember this thing, but uh, yeah, sure. the the comment is that the uh, CMS and LGCP results are all slightly below five sigma, right? So we all know that if we combine these two results, we'll give us like five sigma. So uh, let's compare a nice <laughs> idea. So produce a, a, another paper <laughs> try to redo, redo and actually redo and redo the analysis from almost from scratch, kind of, um, and then combine the result together, become a single analysis somehow. So, so yeah. why do you choose this movie? <laughs> Simply, I don't see. Like, what? Do you remember? Uh, this is actually two two uh, transformer become one. I right? jet fire uh, merge with. Uh, uh, I, I cannot remember the, the, the movie. This is for the second movie of a transformer, but uh, yeah, they become one to fly away, right? So, so <coughs> you take the likelihood. You take all the likelihoods in this PDT beans from both experiments and combine them. This uh, uh, actually, I uh, make a fit yeah. down to the event. So, so I actually have an LGCP event in my hand, so I can do whatever I like. <laughs> so I uh, just want to say, how do we do? Well, just uh, just want to comment. So actually, we did the so-called deep combination. So uh, down to the well, also it's down to likely level. Actually, down to event by event level. So actually, we got all the events, all the BTD value, all the model they have, and the correct for uh, any correlations and see everything. So in principle. Uh, the previous analysis was done in this way. CMS have the CMS formula, HCP have the LGCP formula, basically they are the same. So what we do here, surely, we should have exactly the same frame fraction, right? And then, since the normalization is the same, so we should merge the normalization as well. And uh, here, another, uh, so the fraction between uh, uh, so-called fact hazardization fraction should be merged, but somehow we know CMS and LGCP are in a different detector region. So we do not really co combine them, but we constrain them together to a single value. So, so we use uh, an additional Gaussian constraint to constrain CMS value to LGCP value by like a 5% error allowed by the difference between CMS and LGCP. Okay. Basically, we are measuring like more central, so hazardization fraction can be different. So this is how we do. So and uh, that we also introduce some further uh, improvement or some synchronization things. For example, we have to use a uh, common theoretical models for the background <coughs> and the common frame fraction for this peaking background. All the model, I mean, all the inputs should be synchronized somehow. Before before we are using different values. So so in this uh, combination analysis, we should redo everything by changing the the uh, uh, so called the uh, background model, changing the. Uh, uh, so-called uh, brain fashion used in the uh, in the vehicle modeling, and also another key point is that the, uh, we need to correct for the lifetime distribution. Basically, in our simulation, we we'll use the before we we'll only use a simple decay or B sub S, but actually in the standard model, B sub S decay is a very complicated formula. So it's not exactly just like an exponential. So actually, we correct this as well. So we have a change our efficiency slightly for each beam. They are actually they are depend on the BDT. So we collect all these things together, and the, uh, so that's why we spend a lot of time to, to, to make sure everything is the same. So it's now become 20 categories. So <laughs> before we have a, like a 
trail for CMS and for the HCD, so it become totally become funky and uh, you see there looks much better now, right? Somehow we're tuned in terms of graphical. So uh, the, the the eight categories are on LGCD and uh, twelve on CMS. Actually, we have a long debate, like almost like a 20, uh, 30 minutes debate. The CMS should be put up. Or the LGCD should be put up. Yeah, because the uh, CMS is a C, so it should put up. But the uh, CMS actually have no space to put this region. So so we have a long debate. So decide to put put the LGCD up and uh, insert the the region. So it takes thirty minutes to to fight. <laughs> Just for, for who, who should be up. So this is the final plot, 18, 20 pins together. Okay. So it's a very nice plot, right? So this is a BS uh, to mu mu and the BD to mu peak. And the, uh, the combined value gives us like a 6.2 sigma. Also, we expect in 7.4 because we are actually always measure something smaller than the standard model prediction. What, what, what happened to that point? They are supposed to be. Right? Which one? Uh, it's at the middle. Dip. Uh, which at middle the tip, there's a yeah. data. Yeah, actually, we don't know. It's a data. It's a data. With huge error by it, now. It means that they are not cheating. If your data is there, how come you can draw a line like this? If you can only one tip, right? Oh, because there's no, nothing can, can happen so far. We don't know. But so the data, data, if you, if you mm -hmm. see just directly from the data, you cannot, you cannot, you know, construct a field. That's that true. Be just so this is, I have to believe this model. I mean, believe it, there's uh, only, only these two peaks from, from these four or five points. <coughs> but the field is actually not done by being, actually done by one thing. So this is also can be affected by binning. This is the, the fit is not yeah. done by binning. It means binning. they are not cheating. It means they are not cheating because <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fish, the it's fit, is, no, the no, fit no, is no. not binned. It's not binned. The no, fit there is, is expected binned. resolution. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are expected resolution. Okay. In principle, it's checked in other places. Uh, other yeah, check like uh, depth so, size so, and uh, so, so whatever mass. the uh, these two peaks are overlap, of course, but. But the resolution actually is narrower than the, than the whole thing. Yeah, yeah actually, see, the resolution is pretty wide, as you see this big. Actually, it's a big, so this signal is also, I mean, the resolution actually depends on CMS and the LGCP, and also they are different from. For CMS, it's done by event by event. So if an event, we have a, if an event has its own resolution. Yeah. So actually, it's integrated. So this peak is integrated over the events, and you see how it looks like. So it's not obvious. Actually, actually if, if you don't know, resolution, yeah. if you don't look at those curves, just yeah. look at the, the data, then if you don't know resolution, you cannot make this claim at all. <laughs> right? It's just one peak. So we just say a huge right. bump of adding these two signals together, and then we, we measure something like a double the range of action. <laughs> yeah, anyhow. So uh, so this is a result for BS to mu, which is 2.8 times 10 to the minus 9 with this error ball. BD to mu mu is 3.9 times uh, with this error bar. So for BS to mu mu, we reach a uh, significant like a 6.2 sigma. And the BD to mu mu, actually, we, we find a 3.2 sigma in, in, this, uh, in, the, in, this, in the same way, so called uh, static method, also weak series. So also, we are expecting 0.8 based on standard model of average. So even for some few more things, for example, uh, we, we, we carry out something like this. This is what we call electrical scans in two dimensions, in two dimensions and the one dimension. No? And they basically we profile all the uh, nuisance parameters in, in those scans. Actually, this, uh, this plot is done in, uh, in, 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 our, in our history, in, in our grid here. So it's uh, take five days running on 25, 240 CPUs, actually. It's just this plot. Yeah. Was done here. And, uh, this is the model value, this is what we measure. So we are roughly like uh, less than two, two sigma away from the model so far. If we just look at for one dimensional scan, so this is standard model value, uh, this is for PD, very PS uh, scan, so we can say, okay, this is like 1.2 sigma away from the standard model. This is uh, uh, BD or, or BD to mu mu, and the uh, standard model here, we are measuring here, so like a 2.2 sigma away. Okay. So, so. Piece of these about three times larger. Actually, three point five times larger than the prediction. Three, roughly three point something, three times bigger. Have you produced these plots for CMS alone? 
actually I produce my own version and HSD produce their own version and we, we do a subtraction and see any any anything different and we took almost like uh, three months to figure out why they are different. For example, I'm using a initial value very close to the best value in the, in the central. They are using that setting like plan, a random initial value, so we never get confirmation for a couple of months until we realize that we are using different initial value. And after that, we still figure out uh, number of CPU used in a single feed doesn't matter. <laughs> they are using 12, uh, they are using eight, I'm using 12 CPU per feed. So in the end, we, we agree to use a single feed CPU forever. So it becomes one single point takes 12 hours to do the thing. So what does what does CMS do? Hmm? What does CMS do? It's separated. It's separate. Yeah. Separate. What uh, What the point? Like. What do you mean? What are you separating? Uh, no, so you only use CMS or yeah, 2013. Oh, so that will come back to this is exactly what we done with 2013 paper. We'll come back to one. Uh, I didn't include part here, but this is in the paper. Yeah. Yeah, so this is done in the, the same way we did for 2013 paper. Yeah. <coughs> anyway, I think what you're asking <coughs> is that both of these of S of LHCB and CMS are a little bit downwards. Yeah. Both yeah. of these of D are, c no, uh, uh, to uh, the uh, I, quite upwards, as you say. So uh, I think uh, that's what you're asking. Yeah. Basically, the, the numbers are consistent with each other somehow before combined. After combined, it's definitely the same. And uh, well, I can speak a small joke. When I first come to this combination meeting, actually we host a lot of combination meetings since the beginning, anyhow. But the first meeting, uh, we haven't shown our result to LGCP yet. They haven't shown me our layer result. That's like uh, pre EPS, uh, summer 2013. We all sit down. Okay, what's your number? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, turn on the number and see. Okay, I can already guess the, 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 the uh, average because they are the same. <laughs> Only arrow bar are different. Central variable are exactly the same up to second digits. But after this, all the correction I mentioned, after the results are start to depart from each other, but they, at the beginning, they are the same, somehow. But you use profile like, I'm getting too technical. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Do you both use profile likelihoods? Approximate. These yes. are approximate things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are all profile like you already mentioned. Yes. This is another thing that you may not yeah. trust that in the law statistics. Exactly. So that's why we introduced these uh, feminine cousin scan. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is we done the fourth feminine cousin study for PD, only for PD. For PS, it will take forever, no way. So, but PD is three sigma is still doable within like a weak scale. So basically we do a lot of pseudo experiments to, to evaluate this uh, symmetric, I mean, confidence level for PD. So uh, this is one sigma band, two sigma band, if you compare to the, uh, 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 I would say, the, 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 the dots are from Feldman cousin scans and the, uh, the curves are from uh, the dash curve are from the uh, asymptotic approach. Uh, but the, like, yeah. the, Fel the Feldman cousin also is not covering statistics. Yeah, not, not fully covered. Yeah, yeah, I, agree, I, have a uh, I have a paper that's covering it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know Bob Cousins is in our team, right? Uh, no, I know. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> At least he is satisfied with this, so. Despite the exciting discussion, it's going to be trying to finish in five minutes. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll try, I, uh, let me try to finish. I'll say almost done, Few, uh, five minutes, page, page more, I think. Few more pages only. So anyway, this is the final <coughs> combine, and it becomes three sigma. That's why we usually quote. Uh, and this is another alternative scan done by uh, taking a ratio between B, uh, BS and B, uh, take ratio to the standard model value. So it's, uh, so, so you see that the BT is like a 3.7, higher to the standard model prediction. So from PS is like a small, slightly smaller than the, the standard model value. And this is a ratio between, to take a ratio between BT and BS, we also do a scan, and uh, it's like a concern with standard model, like uh, 2.3 sigma. You now this is the uh, alternative tracks by putting the, the statistical error into the convolution. Anyway, so uh, just come back to here, this is a, uh, I mentioned at the beginning, right? So this is uh, if uh, we have a so a new basis, it can, may be able to boost the branching factor to some higher value. So if uh, you use this uh, combined value to make a contour of that with this guy, a lot of space actually burn <laughs> become like this. So we have all, uh, this is uh, the remaining space for this one sigma and two sigma contour. This is the model. Okay. What what is, what is the peak? It's the model for uh for four G. There's a four. Four generation. Four generation, yeah. Okay. 
All right, so let me uh, just show you quite a quick milestone. Uh, actually, I start to to cut uh, to to chair the meeting in the first uh, in 2013 January when I take over the DFIS convener. Started with with the, with the day only already, and uh, until summer we get the first paper published in PIL, and we get we start to work on this combination. And uh, we in almost a year, more than a year ago, we have a first version of combined feature. Uh, actually, I, both of us write a different feature. I have my own version. Actually, people have their own version. And we com uh, compare results for many, many months until we get everything converged. Start to write a paper in May. And the, uh, finally, in September, we get both analysis approved by two corporations together. Well, well separating. And we all approve. And we finally submit to Nature. So I want to say we took uh, two years finally get it here, but it just submitted this nine years. It takes uh, some more time to be published, and uh, it could be the first paper. Well, it could be a, it can be the first paper from LGC actually, and also can be the first nature with so many <laughs> authors, <laughs> almost three thousand people <laughs> on a single nature later. <laughs> so nature later is like a. Two thousand five hundred words maximum, and we have more people than number of words. <laughs> so anyhow, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Do you know where's the uh, author list will be? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's it's already in the archive, so you can look at no, it. I know, I know that. With nature author. In the uh, nature author list. I don't know what it look like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the CMS for well, should, should be in the no, back. No, I think they put it somewhere. Not, not in the front, no, right? Not in the front, This is the supplementary <laughs> material, I guess. In any way, there's the this, this more words than more people than the number of words we wrote, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> they don't count the uh, names and the word limit. Yeah, actually, they, they, they allow me allow us not to include the names in the, in the words. Otherwise, we'll never publish anything. <laughs> 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 but in that case, you have also institute. Yeah, yeah, also institute. So, <laughs> and every institute has three words, right? So at least two or three words. Yeah. Anyway. So all right. So just give me a quick summary. So this is a history of the measurement from here to here. So finally, we are here. So, uh, so far we measure BS to minimum, like six sigma, so it's measured after the target. And uh, sure, we want to know the next target is definitely BT to minimum, so it needs to be measured. So the error bar is still big, like three sigma, but uh, anyhow, and it's away from the level so far, so we don't know, we need more data to check. So just give a quick shot of this is the same as projection, maybe happened in 2018 or 2015, 25, to, to look at something like this. Well, that's, that's the BT he, peak here is using the cinema prediction, which is like uh, 3.7 times smaller than what we see for so far. So we see here, the second peak is much smaller. So this is an expectation to the future. So this uh, is uh, based on CMS TP. So that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs> So this demonstrates if you do believe in that resolution, okay? Mm -hmm. Eventually at 2025, mm -hmm. 3000 units stand by, you probably see two peaks. But <laughs> you didn't say it now. That's what, I, what I'm saying, right? According to the data, you According didn't say to, it you cannot. If you believe the resolution, you can say that. I, I don't know what. That's why. You, that's, like. that's why you, you can. No, you that, can that, that's a couple of things. Yeah, that, that, I'm gonna come back to that, the, the final. Data, right? Okay, yeah, this one. Let that happen. Let that happen. Yeah, this one. one. Yeah, yeah. If if I'm doing an experiment, I have all this data. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I want to, you know, draw a, a fitting or whatever, you will definitely have only one peak. Period. No, 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 because you no, no, you have asteroid information. No, we know, actually we know this, this if it's just one peak, the width is too wide. So I think this is similar for the fog, just say this is too wide. To what, what do you mean by it's too wide? Resolution. 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 We know the resolution. We know the resolution. Nobody's right. This is only a projection. Yeah. No, what, what, no, no, but he's right, because yeah. if you make an assumption that you have a third peak, 
yeah. and you fit the data, you may get a different result. That's true. This, yeah, this, this is happen. true. I mean, yeah, that's, that's what she's saying. Yeah. But so we should look here at the P whatever. Yeah. <laughs> here you make a particular assumption for yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. This is a town with a particular assumption. That's true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you.